Hi there, my name is Doug Milburn. I'm Vice President and Co-Founder of 45 Drives. At 45 Drives, we make large storage servers, like this Stornator uh, server that's uh, sitting on the table here next to me. So in the video today, what I want to talk about is the evolution of this storage technology. And in particular, I want to take you from a point, September 2009. September 2009, a company called Backblaze um, released an innovation. And the point of the innovation was to take the cost of storage down from what they saw successive in the status quo at the time. And they set about to drop it by an order of magnitude, which they did successfully. They released that innovation in a blog called Petabytes on a Budget. And thus our title of this video, which is Petabytes on a Budget Revisited 2016. So what I want to do in this video is I want to take you through the evolution of this technology from that point where Backblaze started it in September 2009 up to where it is today. So in today, what you get when you buy this storage technology is server capacities that have grown to in excess of half a, half a petabyte per single server. Speeds that have grown to in excess of three gigabytes per second from each server. And the other thing that's happened in the evolution of this technology is we've grown from consumer level hard drives and components to enterprise grade hard drives and components. And uh, as such, there's been a, a, a dramatic improvement in the reliability of, of, of these machines. And the final thing they're gonna talk about this evolution is the wonderful thing about technology, cost. Cost has actually evolved downwards and worse, we're at a point right now where cost per unit capacity is about almost half of what it was in 2009. So let me take you through this technical evolution. So first, just a little bit about Backblaze. So Backblaze, back around 2009 and before that, we're very much in startup mode. Backblaze has grown from a, a, a uh, bootstrap startup into a very, very polished and sophisticated provider of backup services and cloud storage services. And uh, you should check them out. I'm a customer of theirs. They back up my laptop and they're absolutely wonderful organization. Anyway, uh, let's flash back to September 1st, 2009. Uh, Backblaze was a very young startup at the time. And uh, Backblaze came out with a blog that really got a lot of traction, got a lot of people talking. And so that blog was called Petabytes on a Budget, How to Build Cheap Cloud Storage. And the subtitle on it is Meet the Backblaze Pod, uh, 67 terabytes for $7,867. Okay, and uh, Backblaze's issue, the, 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 the driving pain that they had, they're trying to start up a business. It's based on storage. And basically, as they said, no one sells cheap storage, so we designed it. What this blog was all about was complaining about and detailing their, their, their issue, their complaints about pricing on, on storage servers. Hard drives had become inexpensive. Servers to house them in were many times, uh, almost 10 times the, well, 10 times or more, the price of the hard drives that go in them. And they couldn't start their business on that, so they, they rethought the whole thing. So what I'm gonna show you in this video, what I really wanna concentrate on here, is to show you a quick snapshot of what you got in September 1st, 2009, at the dawn of this, uh, of this whole thread of large storage, of the Backblaze uh, thread of large storage, versus what you get today and uh, following September uh, 2016, so seven years later. Back in 2009, okay, a petabyte of storage came in 15 servers, one and a half terabyte drives, so that's lots of rack space, lots of energy usage, uh, $150,000, uh, ballpark if you're valuing your labor when you uh, got this together. It's build your own, figure out your own software, consumer level hard drives and all the things that come with that. I'll talk about that a little bit more. And speeds, yeah, two to 300 megabytes per second. Um, today, let's flash ahead. One petabyte of storage, okay? It's two servers, okay? Using 10 terabyte drives. A price? down to about $80,000, okay, so $80,000, uh, way less rack space used, way less energy used. Uh, the hardware is turnkey, reliable, enterprise grade. The drives are enterprise grade drives with a massive step up in reliability and reduction in, in owner's headaches. 
on those, those drives. And uh, finally, speed. We're talking speeds of three, three and a half gigabytes per second. So we're talking about saturating three to four 10 gigabit lines, if you are skilled enough in your connectivity to do so. So uh, anyway, that's a major leap forward. So let me go on and explain that. So along the way, uh, friends at, at uh, Backblaze, we developed a relationship and uh, you know, one of the things we did was we built uh, enclosures at our protocase division and, uh, and eventually full uh, finished tested storage servers based on the Backblaze design. Along the way, a lot of people who came were just absolutely intrigued. Their message of getting an, an order of magnitude price reduction resonated, imagine, but a number of them didn't buy. And we went back to them and asked them why they didn't buy. And there were two big reasons why they didn't buy. And number one was speed, okay? So, and when you look at speed, Backblaze never designed these things to be fast. It was built around one gigabit connectivity. So we're thinking, one gigabit connectivity. You can get 100 megabytes per second down a one gigabit line ballpark. So they're not running their machines. They're not really pushing them too fast, you know, in, in, in their first years. And again, everything's changed. This is 2009, and we're talking the years following that. Um, so, so we had other people, many people came to us to talk about uh, streaming video. Streaming video, you need gigabytes per second, really, to build a business around that. So these machines were not suitable for that. Here's the other problem. Backblaze's machines were built around just dead lowest material costs. And the problem with consumer, reliability, you know, what Backblaze is doing with hundreds and then eventually thousands of servers is they're obviously, and again, their software, they never really disclose what they do in their software. That's their, their secret sauce. They don't tell anybody about it, but obviously it's a clustering solution. They're getting reliability through redundancy at a machine level, not at, in, at, at a multiple machine level, not at an individual machine level. So we had people coming to buy who were looking to buy one, two, five, ten servers. When you only have that few servers, you need single server level reliability. And, and so we found out in our first years in large, serve, in, in large storage um, was that consumer level drives, if you use them in large storage arrays, the reliability is low enough that what will happen is you'll have drives drop out. When a drive drops out, your array has to rebuild. When your arrays are rebuilding, system performance is dramatically degraded. And on top of that, you're putting all kinds of miles on your consumer hard drives, which just don't have that many miles in them compared to enterprise grade hard drives. They're not designed for high, high sustained throughput. Uh, so the solution to that is to move to enterprise grade, uh, enterprise grade components and enterprise grade hard drives. Backblaze didn't do that for cost reasons. Again, they had the problem solved. Other people didn't work for them. So all this eventually prompted us to pursue a whole other design thread. And that design thread, we call it direct wired. And direct wired, we use high speed HBAs, um, you know, enterprise grade devices uh, to interface between a PCI bus and a hard drive. And, and whereas Backblaze's design were based on, uh, on, on multiplexers. And uh, when you multiplex, you lose speed. And there's also extra complexity, which we believe uh, uh, contributed to some of the reliability issues that we saw. Based on that, um, we developed our, our Stornator line of products, and, uh, and, and we blogged about this in detail. So here's the big difference. Number one, speed. Okay? By going direct wired and going through HBAs, um, and, and there's other choices, other component differences that we used along the way too. Uh, our machines, we saw that they're easily capable of three, three and a half gigabytes per second, okay? So, uh, you know, o over 10 times the speed of the, the other machines. And at, at, at three gigabytes, three, three and a half gigabytes per second, uh, these things are completely suitable for things like uh, video editing direct from server, uh, streaming video. Uh, we have people using these things for security cameras, uh, you know, running hundreds of security cameras off single machines, uh, medical imaging data, 
And uh, anyway, a, a whole different thing. You can do stuff that, that you just couldn't do because of the speed limitations on the, on the other machines. Secondly, reliability went way up. We really began to recommend to anybody who's buying these large storage machines, you know, if you're a storage expert, you've been doing this for years, great. But if you're not, if you're new to large storage machines, we recommended that people buy enterprise grade hard drives. Enterprise grade hard drives have a higher capital cost at the start, but they have five year warranties, typically five year warranties on them. And they have five year warranties for a reason. Uh, because they last. They're designed, they're rated for a uh, throughput in terms of terabytes per month, in, in terms of reading and writing. And uh, they just stay up, they're just a whole different beast. So, and, and because what we saw is we saw people who were using enterprise grade hard drives in their arrays, were just putting the machines together and just not having problems. Let's talk about software. Uh, these machines are now proven and tested with many, many users. Um, anything from uh, server operating systems, Linux, our, our, our standard, an awful lot of people choose Linux, uh, and CentOS is the standard that we ship with, and many, many of our machines uh, ship with CentOS. Uh, loaded turnkey, ready to roll, and we support people on, their, on getting up and going on that. Uh, any other distro, Linux pretty much works on it. Uh, free BSD works like a charm. Finally, uh, on, on single machine operating systems, uh, Windows Server 2012 is uh, solid as a rock. Um, it'll work just, just great in these machines. You can get some great performance out of it, uh, although there's some things you gotta do if you wish to use RAID arrays properly, but that's everybody who uses Microsoft understands that. So if you wish, you can move to a NAS operating system. Free NAS is a tried and true system, been around for a long time, works on top of FreeBSD and uses ZFS. ZFS is an awesome file system. Uh, really, really immune to data loss, really, really reliable. The up and comer in uh, NAS is Rockstar. Rockstar is built on Linux and the new ButterFS, which is also a copy on write file system like, uh, like ZFS is. Both awesome systems, both work solid as a rock. Um, let me go one place farther. There is extensive experience using these machines with clustering software now. So in clustering software, uh, we would recommend to anybody the easiest thing for anybody who wants to you know, create a single namespace with multiple servers, which it's quite surprising how many of our customers are doing that, uh, GlusterFS. Uh, we support, we'll ship you machines, talk to us if you're interested in GlusterFS, we'll ship machines preloaded with it, and uh, we'll support you along the way if you need help getting set up and started. Uh, MooseFS has been used by a number of our users who want uh, real super scalability, really, really large size clustering. Uh, and then things like, uh, people are successfully using things like uh, Ceph and the object store world. And uh, Kringo. Uh, Kringo is really a wonderful enterprise level uh, software defined storage management system. And we work with the people in Kringo and can put together absolutely great solutions on that. Okay, anyway, to summarize, um, we've come a long way since the advent of this, this thread of large storage. Okay, again, I go over this once again, a petabyte of storage in Backblaze's groundbreaking blog, okay, and don't forget, that was an order of magnitude almost less expensive than the status quo, okay, $150,000, 15 servers. Let's move ahead today, $80,000, and two servers. Major savings in, in capital cost, major savings in rack space, major, space, major savings in operating energy. Uh, the solution in 2009 was build your own, configure your own, figure out how to do the software. Okay, today it's turnkey, uh, pre-installed software, proven software operating on this platform. Takes all that risk out of it. Uh, back in 2009, it's consumer hard drives, consumer components. Today, it's enterprise grade hard drives and enterprise grade components, so a whole different level of reliability. Finally, big difference, back in uh, 2009, you'd be uh, just sort of relaxing your way along at 200 megabytes per second. In today's machines, we're talking about three, three and a half gigabytes per second.
Okay. So as you can see, this field has really progressed and we hope to see it continue. So if you're interested in pursuing this type of storage solution, we're here at 45 Drives. Love to talk to you and love to help see if we can figure out a solution that would work for you. And uh, so please contact us. Also, if you're interested, uh, Brett Kelly, our R&D engineer, Brett Kelly, um, has done a couple of blogs on the one, ter one petabyte cluster solution. One sh showing how easy it is to put together a one petabyte cluster. And in his other video, actually, he puts up a cluster cluster and tries to break it and, and uh, starts yanking cables out and that sort of stuff and, and trying to see if he can break the cluster, and, uh, which just keeps on chugging away. So uh, I'd encourage you to go have a look at those videos, which will be coming out very shortly. So anyway, thank you very much.